Hare Krishna everyone, so we are back with Shravanam Diaries podcast. I am your host Lalita Devi Dasi. We are continuing to read Light of the Bhagavata by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Jai. Text 13. In the rainy season, some of the roads are not frequently used and become covered with long grasses. And thus, it becomes very difficult to see the road. Similarly, in this age, the transcendental scriptures are not properly studied by the brahmanas. Being covered by the effects of time, the scriptures are practically lost, and it becomes very difficult to understand or follow them. Purport. A covered road is exactly like a brahmana who is not accustomed to studying and practicing the reformatory practices of Vedic injunctions. He becomes covered with long grasses of illusion. In that condition, forgetful of his constitutional nature, he forgets his position of eternal servitorship to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By being deviated by the seasonal overgrowth of long grasses created by Maya, a person identifies himself with illusory productions of nature and succumb, succumbs to illusion, forgetting his spiritual life. So it's important to study and practice the Vedic injunctions. Text 14. The lightning becomes unsteady in its friendship, failing to remain faithfully in any one of the clouds. Although they are the friends of the entire world, just as lusty women do not remain steady even in the company of men who possess excellent qualities. Purport. During the rainy season, lightning appears in one group of clouds and then immediately in another group of clouds. This phenomenon is compared to a lusty woman who does not fix her mind on one man. A cloud is compared to a qualified person because it pours, pours rain and gives sustenance to many people. A man who is qualified similarly gives sustenance to many living creatures, such as family members or many workers in business. Unfortunately, his whole life can be disturbed by a wife who divorces him. When the husband is disturbed, the whole family is ruined, the children are dispersed, or the business is closed and everything is affected. It is therefore recommended that a woman desiring to advance in Krishna consciousness peacefully live with a husband, and that the couple should not separate under any condition. The husband and wife should control sex indulgence and concentrate their minds on Krishna consciousness, so their life may be successful. After all, in the material world, a man requires a woman, and a woman requires a man. When they are combined, they should live peacefully in Krishna consciousness, and should not be restless, like the lightning flashing from one group of clouds to another. Very important point. Hmm. Text 15. 15. In the midst of the thunder, in the cloudy sky, there appears a rainbow that has no string. Its appearance is compared to the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his servants in the midst of the material atmosphere. Purport 
The Sanskrit word guna means quality or mode, as well as string or rope. When a rainbow appears during the rainy season, it is observed to be like a bow with no guna or string. Like a bow. Bow, yeah. So similarly, the appearance of the personality of Godhead or his transcendental servants has nothing to do with the qualitative modes of material nature. The phenomenal appearance of the transcendence is free from the qualities of material nature. And thus, it resembles a bow with no string. A bow, excuse me. So the transcendental Supreme Lord is eternally the form of transcendental existence, knowledge and bliss. The material energy works under his good will, and therefore, he is never affected by the modes of material nature. When he appears before us in the midst of material interactions, he remains always unaffected, like a stringless rainbow. By his inconceivable energy, the Supreme Lord can appear and disappear like a rainbow, which appears and disappears without being affected by the roaring thunder and the cloudy sky. The Lord is eternally the biggest of the big and the smallest of the small. The living beings who are his parts and parcels are the smallest of the small. And he is the biggest of the big as the absolute truth, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Haribo. Next verse is text 16. At night, by the grace of the moonlight, the clouds in the sky can be seen moving. Yet the moon itself also appears to be moving. Just as a living being appears to be moving because of false identification with matter. Hmm. At night, purport. At night in the rainy season, the moving clouds reflecting the moonlight make the moon appear to be moving. This is called illusion. The spirit soul, or the living being, is the root of all the activities of the material body. But because of illusion, the spirit soul remains covered by the gross and subtle material bodies. Thus covered, the conditioned soul identifies with the material body and becomes subject to the sense of false ego. This false ego obliges a living being to consider his material body to be his self, the offspring of the body to be his children, and the land of the birth of the body to be an object of worship. Thus the living being's conception of nationalism is another type of ignorance. Because of ignorance, a living being identifies himself with the land of his birth and moves with the misconceptions of national ideas. In fact, however, a living being does not belong to any nation or species of life. He has nothing to do with the body, as the moon has nothing to do with the moving clouds. The moon is far away from the clouds and is fixed in its own orbit. But illusion presents a scene in which the moon appears to be moving. A living being should not float with the misconception of the temporary body. He must always know himself to be transcendental to the bodily identity. 
This is the path of knowledge. And complete knowledge fixes the living being in the orbit of spiritual activities. Oh, this is so beautiful. Complete knowledge fixes the living being in the orbit of spiritual activities. The spiritual living force is always active by nature. By illusion, his activities are wrongly directed in relation with the body. But in the liberated condition of complete knowledge, his activities are conducted in spiritual devotion. Liberation does not mean stopping activities. It means being purified of illusory activities and becoming transcendental to relations with the gross and subtle bodies. Jai, we're going to stop here for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. The link to this book is in the description. The link to the website where there is description of the book, the episodes, list of the episodes, and all the illustrations from the book is also in the description. And on our social networks, Facebook and Instagram and Tumblr, we are posting daily the illustrations to the episodes that we have read previously. So, uh, and we shall continue tomorrow. Hare Krishna. See you.